Hello my aviation friends, in my previous video I showed you how to service hydraulic system on A320 and where you can find hydraulic reservoirs and if you haven't seen it yet, link to it is up here or uh, it will be also in description below and in today's video I would like to show you how to service hydraulic system on Boeing 737 and uh, same like on A320, uh, 737 have also three hydraulic systems A B and standby and almost all components of uh, these three hydraulic systems you can find in the main landing gear wheel well where are we going to take a look straight away to enter in the landing gear wheel well we don't have to open any landing gear doors because Boeing 737 does not have them as I mentioned before here in the wheel well you can find almost all hydraulic components and flight controls for the wing surfaces but I would like to focus only on hydraulic components today here on the front wall we can see two electric motor driven pumps or EMDP and in the middle we can see power transfer unit or PTU these two pumps belong to the system A and B and they are powered by 115 volt AC and they are able to provide 3000 psi. These pumps are used during flight and of course during ground operations. System A and B also receive hydraulic pressure from engine driven pumps or EDP but of course they supply hydraulic pressure only when engines are running. Now let's take a look on PTU. PTU pump supplies an emergency source of hydraulic power to the leading edge flaps and slots. It will receive pressure from system A and generate pressure for system B in case pilot give command to extend leading edge flaps and slots and pressure decrease in the system B below 2350 psi. Ok now we know what provides hydraulic power to system A and B and we can move further. And here we have frangible fitting. If you want to know more about this device, click on the link in the right top corner or later you will find it in the description below. Ok, let's move to the standby system. Behind this panel we can find EMDP for this system. And what is it good for? The standby hydraulic system operates automatically or manually as a backup to hydraulic system A and B. The system supply leading edge flaps and slots, standby rudder power control unit and left and right thrust reverser. Ok, now we know how all three systems are pressurized, so we can take a look on the reservoirs. Hydraulic system A reservoir is on the center of the main wheel well on the forward bulkhead. Maximum capacity of the reservoir is 25.8 liters, but we are using only 21.6 liters, which is shown as 100% in the cockpit or full on the quantity indicator installed on the reservoir. By the way, transmitter indicator is float type. It looks like this and the reservoir for system A and B, we can find the same type, but they are not interchangeable. The hydraulic system B reservoir is on the right forward bulkhead of the main wheel well. Capacity of the reservoir is 40.6 liters, but again we are using only 31.1 liters, which is shown as 100% in the cockpit and full on the quantity indicator installed on the reservoir. Both reservoirs are pressurized by air bleed and this pressure helps to supply fluid from the reservoirs to the pumps. Ok, that was reservoir for system B and now let's take a look on the standby reservoir. It is located on the keel beam in the main landing gear wheel well and it is the smallest one. It has volume of 13.3 liters and reservoir have no physical indication on the surface. It have only low quantity switch which will activate low quantity light in the cockpit if fluid in the standby reservoir decreases to less than 50%. And why doesn't it actually have physical indication on the reservoir? Because you are not able to overfill it. It is interconnected with the reservoir for the B system through the fill and balance line, which leads me to the servicing of the hydraulic reservoirs. Because on the reservoir selector valve, you have only three positions, port A, port B and close. And how it works? 
Port A sent hydraulic fluid to system A reservoir and port B sent hydraulic fluid first to standby reservoir and only when this reservoir is full, fluid start to flow through the fill and balance line to B reservoir. Okay, that's all what I want to tell you about the reservoirs and the systems. And now I would like to show you the servicing itself. Equipment for servicing we can find in the right main landing gear wheel wall area and we don't need to connect anything special like on A320. A hose is already installed on the system. As a next step I need to select the system which I want to service. In my case it is system A. And next you need to pull lever from the stop position and start pumping. The pump itself is a piston type and it's double action so you refilling with the pulling and pushing. My can is almost empty and on indicator we can see that the reservoir is almost full. And I can return everything to normal conditions, which means selector valve to close, I need to remove the can, store the filling hose and the pump lever. Of course I need to clean everything to don't leave mess behind. Ok, and let's take a look on the cockpit indication. On MFD selector I need to press system page and here you have quantity and pressure. Ok, that's all. We can switch off the airplane and we can go. Well, this is all what I want to show you guys today. I would like to say big thanks to Stick because I'm currently not working on Boeing 737. So some part of the video were filmed by Stick. So again, thank you very much. Uh, as the next thing, I would like to ask you again to don't use this maintenance manual. Always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. All what's remaining is to say thank you for your time. My name is Tomasz, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto and I'll see you next one. Bye.